These stories are from my parents' old house. The first being that there were multiple occasions where I fell asleep on the couch and would somehow, without explanation, without anyone else taking me, and without doing it myself, wake up in my room. Not to mention, I would see someone standing at the top of the stairs, and occasionally, I'd hear footsteps upstairs when no one was home. I'd always have the feeling that someone else was there. Strangely enough, the person I saw at the top of the stairs was also a lady in white. Although she was very young, I'll never forget the night that we moved out, because it was one of the scariest things that I can remember. Over the last few days, the footsteps had gotten so bad and so much louder, to the point that it sounded like someone was almost running upstairs. It got to the point where I felt brave enough to look, and as my head peered upstairs, I saw some horrifying, large black shadow dart into my parents' room as I was home alone. Shortly after, the heavy footsteps started running around in circles upstairs. I legitimately thought at that point that there must be someone in the house. So I grabbed a bat and ran upstairs. As soon as I hit the top floor, the footsteps stopped abruptly and there was no one there. But not five seconds had passed and I heard a crash in the garage. I was extremely relieved because my mum had likely just gotten home and started to pack the rest of the boxes into her car. I ran downstairs and opened the door to the garage. But my mum wasn't there. The boxes that had previously been stacked very neatly were tossed clear across the room, spread all over the place. As the adrenaline kicked in, I heard footsteps running upstairs and a door slam. That was it. I noped right out of the house and waited on the porch. It was weird because up until that point, whatever was in my house had been non-intrusive and friendly. That was until we decided to move. Ever since that house, I've been really curious about paranormal things. Part of me thinks it was obviously a ghost, but I also want more definitive proof. Ghost TV shows never satisfied this, as they would often comment on something that you couldn't see or verify. I felt it's cold in here. I heard something. Did you see that happen off camera? You get what I mean. So, when I went to my friend's house several years later and found everyone playing with a Ouija board, I was pretty excited. I had never seen one before, but I knew how they worked. I joined in, and after talking to two ghosts, it was pretty obvious that one of my friends was moving it. You could see the guy. He had that, I'm a scare everyone, look on his face. So we kicked him off. At this point, I should probably present some backstory. According to my girlfriend, who has a really hard time believing in anything supernatural, her sister has been haunted since she was a child. Everything from seeing a small child run in front of the television multiple times, multiple people seeing the same tall man lurking in the dark, to a light bulb exploding in her bedroom and then the door slamming and locking itself. The light in that room stopped working and every electrician they hired couldn't figure out what was wrong. At the time of this story, they were in the process of moving out of that house and had basically no furniture left in it. Fortunately for my curiosity and the relevance of this story, she was also in the room. At that point, it was only me and another guy who I really trusted and knew he wouldn't be moving the planchette around pointlessly. So I asked if there was anything following her that might want to speak. My girlfriend's sister freaked out for a second and made it very clear she did not want to be a part of this at all. But then the planchette moved to yes. We asked it a few more questions. Will you speak to us? Yes. Will you stay with us if she leaves the room? No. 
How old are you? Nine. This question was confusing because according to every person in the family, they had seen a very tall man. Does this mean that she was nine when you started following her? Yes. At this point, she noped out of that room and the moment she stepped out, the planchette moved straight to goodbye and that was it. We couldn't speak to it anymore. But then I had a great idea. Let's take the Ouija board to her house and try it there, I proposed. We convinced the poor girl to come with us on the condition that she would be able to put on her headphones and drown out whatever we were saying, as she didn't want to have anything to do with it. We arrived at the house and set up the board on the small island in the kitchen. We wanted to turn the lights off so she retreated to the kitchen pantry with another person and turned the lights on in there. Can we speak to the entity we spoke to in the other house? The planchette moved to yes. Are you the same entity that's following her around? Yes. At this point I wanted proof. I wanted something solid that I could take away from this experience and say, without a doubt, that there is something beyond our understanding and point to this as proof, at least to myself. Will you move something in the room? No. Will you move something if I'm the only person in the room? No. Would you move something if she was the only one here? Yes. And then I had an idea. It was crucial that nobody in the pantry hear what I was about to say, so I said it very quietly. Could you shut the pantry light off? There was a very uncomfortable silence as the other people around me waited to see what happened. The planchette began to move towards yes but it dragged off the board and towards the pantry. There was a loud slam in the pantry. The lights went out and everyone screamed inside and fell out. The next moment was one of panic, confusion, and at least for me, achievement. Whatever the hell had just happened in that pantry was exactly what I had been looking for. Something real that I could point to and say, this is how I know. After the two had caught their breath, they both told me that there was a wooden board on top of the shelf, leaning against the wall. According to them, the board flipped out from the wall and slammed the shelf, flipping it on the floor. If I remember correctly, it hit one of them and left a bruise. They weren't sure how the lights went out though. One possibly is that in a panic to leave the room, one of them bumped against the switch, but the moment had been too chaotic to really tell beyond a doubt, why the light switched off. 70% of the group was ready to nope out, but there were a couple of us, including myself, that wanted to bring the board into the room that had the most activity. It was the same room where that light bulb had exploded. The same room that the dogs would never go. And the same room that the children would avoid looking at when they passed. Me and two others decided to use the board there. And upon walking into the room, it felt like a heavy blanket had been laid upon me. It felt like the sinking feeling when the love of your life tells you to go piss off. It was almost hard to breathe, like your bathroom fills up with steam, except it was very cold. Me and the other two sat down and started asking questions, except, except there was something very different before the planchette had been moving slowly and deliberately across the board. But now, it was moving so fast, it would almost fly off the board. In fact, at one point, it slipped out from under my fingers and kept on going. The last question we managed to ask it was its name. It began to spell out G O D. At this point, the other two people noped out of the room and left the board immediately. I told it we had to go and moved it to goodbye. When we left the room, we found out that the other girl that had been in the pantry had to leave the house and was throwing up outside. 
When we asked her why, she said that the air had felt so heavy that she began to get nauseous. This experience was without a doubt the most terrifying and exhilarating of my life. It was exactly what I was looking for, and more. One thing stuck with me more than anything else, even more than the slamming board in the pantry, the implications of which still sends a wave of terror down my back at the very thought. Just before I left that room, I asked it if it would be willing to stay with me if she went home. It said yes. As far as the house goes though, they've been moved out for a couple of years now. Every time they had to go back to collect their things, there was a chair that had moved to a different place in the house. At one point it was upstairs, in the same room that we went into, facing the wall. We drove past it a couple of days later. It was in the living room facing the window. A couple of days after that, they opened the garage door and it was dead centre facing out. I also know that since they moved out, the house has been sold several times as it seems that the people who move in tend to quickly move out. Even walking past the house is really unnerving as all the trees in the front are now dead whilst all the other trees in the other houses are thriving. It feels almost cliche, but it is very creepy nonetheless. These stories didn't happen to me, but to my grandmother and my mother. Both of them swear by these stories. Over the years, I would ask them to retell them and they would always be the same. When my mum was a young girl, about age 10 to 16. She lived in a house with my grandma. So, my mum's room was upstairs above the kitchen and below the attic. Her and grandma both claimed to hear strange sounds coming from the attic, but assumed it was just an old house and possibly even rodents. But when my mum became a teenager, she would like to get up at night, sometimes sneak around the house, sometimes go get food, or sneak out with friends. But before then, she would never really leave her room at night. There was one night in particular. She told me that her mouth was extremely dry and it had woken her up. She exits her room and goes downstairs into the kitchen for a drink, but she sees something at the bottom of the stairs. It was a man. He was sitting on the bottom steps, hunched over. My mom froze. She didn't think that he'd heard her, otherwise he would have moved. So she tried to get a better look at him. She said that he was very faintly transparent, but other than that, looked like a solid man. He had dark overalls on with a worn out hat. From the side, it looked like he had a beard. My mom started to get creeped out and ran back to her room, occasionally looking back just to make sure he wasn't following her, which he didn't. When she was telling me this 20 years later, she said that the feeling surrounding him was so sad that it had actually scared the shit out of her. My grandma on the other hand knew he was there all along. She felt him when they first moved in. She said that every time she would get home from driving my mum to work or school, she would come home and would get this urge to look up at the attic window. He would be standing there just looking out, not at anything in particular. He would be just standing there looking out at nothing. The first few times my grandma would go upstairs to make sure it wasn't an intruder, but by the time she got there he would be gone. No footsteps in the dust. She said he was just harmless, but at the same time he was very eerie. She called him crazy, but never explained why. After years of living with him, his sad aura and walking around, his redecorating habits, his window gazing, my grandma said that one event really stuck. My mum was in her late teens and my grandma had just gotten married. My grandma almost had everything packed and was ready to move, but she couldn't find my mum's baby book. Grandma looked absolutely everywhere, and I mean everywhere, and she couldn't find them. 
She felt horrible for losing them and said that she just sat on the couch crying over those baby books. So she went upstairs to the bathroom to go wipe her face. And when she came back, she saw what was on the couch and froze. Exactly on the spot where she had just been sitting were the baby books. Four bulky baby photo albums. She quickly put them in the box and took it out to the car. She said that as they were leaving, she saw the old man in the window. Grandma said that over the years, she had came across people that had lived in the house. And when my grandma went to ask, Can I ask you something about your attic? They would reply with, Did you see the old man too? I'm currently living only a block away from that exact house. So I went over and took a picture of it. And circled is the window where he stands. The residents now have a curtain in that window. Which sucks because I haven't actually seen him. But who knows? So my grandparents put up their old 150 year old house for sale. They were not home at the time and they left me alone to deal with the real estate agent coming over with the potential buyer later that day. So the real estate agent arrives and brings with her the potential buyer, a very nice Muslim lady and her two little girls. But I noticed that one of the little girls was of Indian descent rather than Arabic ethnicity. Funnily enough, she was wearing a Catholic school uniform. It almost looked identical to the uniform I had to wear when I went to pre-primary. It's a bit weird, but whatever. So I let them into my house and the two girls walk upstairs. The Indian girl looks at me as she walks up with her hand on the banister and gives me a smile. I went downstairs to open up my uncle's granary flat and after waiting for them to look around my grandparents' house, I walk down to the granary flat and the little girls run past me. They ran into my little cousin's room and I went in to make sure they weren't messing around with any of my uncle's figurines. The Indian girl was sitting on the bed stroking my cat, whilst the other girl was asking me a really dumb question about some dead hamsters. I decided to stand outside with the keys to lock up once they were done. And after about 10 minutes with the mum and the real estate agent, we walk out with the little Arabic girl, and I'm standing there, pausing, watching for the little Indian girl to come out so I can set the alarm. The real estate agent looks at me and says, why are you waiting? Why don't you just lock the house? And I reply with, what? I'm waiting for the other little girl, obviously. The real estate agent gives me a really funny look. What other little girl? I give them a look. Uh, the one with the Catholic uniform? The potential buyer then looks at me in shock. I only bought one daughter. And at the same time, the real estate agent gestures to the three of us. Me, the mum, and the girl. Shit. I went in and scurried the place. There was nothing. And there's nowhere she could have gone or hidden. It turns out that there was no other little girl in Catholic uniform. Not a living one anyway. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. No, seriously, thank you so much. It really makes me happy to know that you guys enjoy these stories and videos I make. I don't want to sound cliche, but it really is quite humbling that so many of you are subscribed, view, and interact with me on a daily basis. So honestly, thank you. It means the world to me. So for all you guys, I have something to announce. I've been working with some very talented people over the last few weeks on a project that either way won't be complete for at least another month. It's not all horror related, but I want to see how you guys receive it. Of course it won't change the frequency of story uploads which is my main focus, but if you guys like it, we'll keep doing it. And if you don't, that's fine too. However, if you guys are super keen to find out what it is, you can stalk me on social media for some sneak peeks. And let me know what you think there. 
If you like the video, a thumbs up or sharing it as always would be appreciated. Remember you can email me your creepy experiences to my email in the description below. But please, remember to give me your consent. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome. Seriously. And I'll see you in the next one. Figuring that this was them, we began shouting that we found them and they could come down now. But the figures just stood there ominously. We were confused. And then all of a sudden we heard footsteps from behind us and turned 